Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to Steve Bannon facing 30 days in jail or potentially two years, which would be very bizarre if he got two years for a misdemeanor, Holder held in contempt. Let's talk about reality-based journalism. A reference to a recent article in the Washington Post we'll talk about. Politico. Holder held in contempt. June 28, 2012. The House has voted to hold Attorney General Eric Holder in contempt of Congress over his failure to turn over documents related to the Fast and Furious scandal. The first time Congress has taken such a dramatic move against a sitting cabinet official. The vote was 255 to 67, with 17 Democrats voting in support of a criminal contempt resolution, which authorizes Republican leaders to seek criminal charges against Holder. This Democratic support came despite a round of behind-the-scenes lobbying by senior White House and Justice officials, as well as pressure from party leaders to support Holder. And... So that's an example of the Attorney General of the United States of America ignoring, just completely mocking, not only ignoring, demand and requests for documents from Congress. Okay? That's one example before we get to Steve Bannon. So you have the Attorney General, I think the only Attorney General general ever to be held in contempt of Congress. Criminal contempt of Congress. All oh, the democ... What happened to our democracy in 2012? Oh, that's right. It was a Democrat, so not that big of a deal. Politico. House panel to hold uh, Clinton tech aide Brian Pagliano in contempt. September 22nd, 2016, a House panel voted Thursday to hold Brian Pagliano, a former technology aide to Hillary Clinton, in contempt of Congress for refusing to testify about the private email setup Clinton used as Secretary of State. Okay, we see a pattern here, don't we? When Democrats refuse to testify or simply refuse to give documents that they are that, that are demanded by Congress. The media reports on it, but, you know, Eric Holder was held in criminal contempt. The House and Oversight and Government Reform Committee voted 1915 along party lines to send a contempt resolution to the full House. The move against Pagliano took place despite repeated warnings from his attorney that the, sh- the showdown was fruitless since the computer specialist would, have, would assert his Fifth Amendment rights. <laughs> so his attorney said, why should he go? He's just going to plead the Fifth. And so they ignored the congressional subpoena, which are not optional, according to Representative uh, Chairman, Panel Chairman uh, Jason Chaffetz said. After Pagliano failed to show up for the second committee hearing, he was formally called to in the past two weeks. Tell us more about Steve Bannon and how he's undermining democracy. You can disagree with him or you can agree with him, but don't say that Democrats or people linked to Democrats haven't done the same or worse. And so, and and Pagliano and others who were involved would have known how Clinton and her team transferred top secret and special access program intelligence onto private servers. SAP Intel, according to NBC News, everything I say is backed up by public record reputable sources. That's why, thank God, I'm always in pristine. Um, I'm always good to go, always. <laughs> but here, you have the Washington Post that we just talked about. So hit subscribe to this channel. Go right now after this to the Nuclear Confrontation and Stock Market Crash channel. I have a very important segment there. And if you want to support my work, my Patreon is below. Also, I'll be back on this channel and the Stock Market Crash channel uh, at around 4 p.m. Pacific, 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific, so be here. And I'll finally get to the Bitcoin 10K Oil Prices 150 Recession channel tonight. I'll have a very important segment this evening. Bitcoin's going to get to 10000 or lower. And I, I predicted all of this, the stock market crash we're seeing. Market's up today, so what? It's going to crash, unfortunately. I said that we're going to have a recession and um, crypto is going to tank in September of 2021. 
Go to the description section right now, and you can see, and I wrote in The Federalist, that Democrats were hurtling this country towards a stock market crash in October of 2021. I explained exactly why, and we saw the market tank this year. It's going to get, unfortunately, a lot worse. So hit subscribe to this channel, the Stock Market Crash channel, and the Bitcoin Crash channel. It's below The, the two others are below in the description and pinned comment. Be back here at uh, probably 3 p.m. Pacific and also um, right after this segment, go to the Nuclear Confrontation and Stock Market Crash channel for another segment. Washington Post, Steve Bannon might finally go to jail. We can hope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Washington Post never wrote, Eric Holder might finally go to jail, we can hope. Or Brian Pagliano might finally go to jail, we can hope. Never wrote that. Why would they write that? They're Democrats. Why? If only he'd pay another, you know, if only he'd pay uh, for another crime. The way he tried to turn the public against reality-based press. <laughs> reality-based press. And buried truth under an avalanche of lies. Oh! So let's look at the, uh, the Inspector General Horowitz years back detailed the inappropriate or the salacious relationships between press and bureau agents who had it in for Trump. Then you have the Steele dossier, which was published by BuzzFeed, which was a compilation of lies, completely and utterly fake news, and uh, contrived and fabricated allegations against Trump, which would be viewed as baseless claims if they were leveled against Democrats. But anyway, it says here we, that he faces about 30 days in jail because it's a misdemeanor, but he could face two years. Now, the interesting thing is here, uh, the great manipulator, <laughs> he's, called, uh, <laughs> he's called the great manipulator, <laughs> could even serve jail time if convicted, as much as two years or perhaps more likely as little as 30 days. Criminal contempt of Congress, after all, is just a, 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 a misdemeanor. So, <laughs> the Clinton IT aide and also Eric Holder, they didn't care, it was a misdemeanor. Uh, and then it goes on, my animus for Bannon comes partly from the way he has helped to turn the public against reality-based press. Hmm. Let's talk about reality-based press, shall we? Ask this question. Are there any supporters of President Trump? And this is why you watch this channel, ladies and gentlemen. It's a very simple question. And this is why, and I hope, wonderful, because there are some really good Washington Post journalists, and there actually are a couple really, really good New York Times journalists. There are a couple good journalists here and there, okay? But every single, well, let's just ask this question. This is why you watch this channel. Are there any supporters of President Trump published or working for the Washington Post, the New York Times, MSNBC, CNN, The Atlantic, uh, Esquire, Vanity Fair, Time Magazine, BuzzFeed, Vice, New Yorker, New York Magazine, Rolling Stone, uh, obviously not Mother Jones, The Nation, Los Angeles Times. Um, you can look at uh, pretty what The Economist. I mean, are there any are there any supporters of President Trump working at these publications? Okay, now there aren't. And are there any supporters of President Trump at Twitter or Facebook? No. You have all social, you have social media algorithms. Every single, almost every single publication in politics run and being published or journalists being published who are liberal Democrats. They say the same things. Everybody from Rolling Stone to the Washington Post to the Atlantic to Time Magazine says Trump bad, Democrats good. They, if they don't say Democrats good verbatim, they'll say, they'll talk about a topic or they'll, they'll, the narrative will be, hey, you know what, Democrats are on the right side of history. Trump is a horrible person, but the reality is that Trump presided over record low unemployment, record low black and Latino unemployment, 
Uh, wages, real wages were up under Trump. Real wages are down 4.4%, according to the Wall Street Journal. Not one person, I mean, the economy is terrible. The economy was great under Trump up until his last year when Andrew Cuomo and others got Emmys. Well, Andrew Cuomo got an Emmy for tanking his economy. But let's talk about reality-based journalism for a couple seconds before we end this and go to the uh, nuclear confrontation and stock market crash channel. New York City, New York City had a um, public service announcement on what to do in the event of a nuclear strike, God forbid. <laughs> so the, could you imagine if Trump was president and, and, and one of the largest cities in, in the world, uh, run by Democrats, obviously, but uh, had a, a public service announcement on a potential nuclear annihilation? Could you imagine? I mean, it would be like Trump. This is Trump's foreign policy. But anyway, ask yourself also, has anyone ever been charged with conspiring alongside a foreign intelligence official or any official? Okay, because that is a crime. Not one person in Trump's Trump world, Trump, his, his administration was ever charged. Assange wasn't. Nobody was. And he should be free. No, he's a publisher. So he was never charged with conspiring alongside anyone from the Kremlin. Neither was Trump or anyone around Trump. Michael Flynn should never have been indicted, should never have been investigated. They already uh, had the transcript of the call with Kislyak. And then they spun it to, oh, he lied to Pence. Like, well, what? What does that have to do with anything? Like, as if Pence is the paragon of virtue. So that means what? And... So you have uh, court intrigue or palace intrigue wrapped into or manipulated into, well, you know, he, he lied to Pence for a reason. He was being compromised by the Kremlin. How do we know this? Well, they won Pulitzer Prizes uh, because you had intelligence officials, outgoing Democratic Party intelligence officials, feeding nonsense to journalists. And the Steele dossier was an example of not only fake news, but a political campaign's attempt, successful attempt, at tarnishing an entire presidency. And Trump is right when they say they should, they should, uh, uh, their, their Pulitzer Prizes should be revoked or removed or rescinded. Anyway, hit subscribe to this channel. Go right now to the Nuclear Confrontation and Stock Market Crash channel right this second, people. I'll be back at like 3 p.m. Pacific, so be here.